So, I, when I played my Randy Rhodes Les Paul last time, it was, the neck was jacked up. I could play all the strings except for the high E because it was touching, you know, and uh, the neck was straight. And I didn't have the right uh, truss rod adjustment thing. I couldn't find it. So I just ordered one on Amazon. It came in like 24 hours. Boop. And I got it. And I'm, I'm trying to bow the neck, you know. So this goes up because it was completely flat. You never want your neck to be completely flat. So I was trying to get it to bow up. And I kept turning little, 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 beep. It's done. It starts spinning. I'm like, oh, sh so I screw it back, get it to, so it's, there's tension. And I'm like, okay, now what? So I'm done. I got to send it to my guy. I don't want to spend money. I'm not going to, with that thing, I'm telling you, it's not a 74 Gibson Custom. I mean, it's it's a replica of a 74 Gibson Custom, but it's not. It's a Japanese made, it's an Epiphone, for crying out loud. It's a Les Paul Custom Epiphone that I had uh, the pickups it, well, mainly this one, the bridge, taken out, you know, I, you know, got it from a 70-something Les Paul, 73, 74, might have been 75, I don't know, but my, he had one, he put it in, he, you know, potted it and put it in my guitar, and the thing sounds awesome. When he gave it back to me, it played great, sounded great. It's got a nice, big, sturdy, hard shell case. To me, that thing's worth more than anything because it sounds, and everybody that hears it says, it sounds amazing. But it isn't a Gibson. No, it's not. But I have a Gibson Custom that was a piece of junk. And I had to get the whole thing redone. And I thought it was just meh. And I figured I'm going to do something different. So I had the polka dots put on it. And now everybody's like, well, it looks like a Gibson. It is a Gibson. It's a Gibson. It's not a 74. Two? No. McMars had a 72 custom. Randy had a 74 custom. Why? Okay, so it's not a 74, but it's a 70, what is it, 77? Les Paul Custom. Who cares? All you guys want to know is if it's a Gibson, yes. And it was totally redone from top to bottom, everything, pickups replaced. I had guitar fetish put in, I ripped those out, I had Seymour's put in, kept those. But then I decided to put the one guitar fetish in here, because that sounded better for some reason. The, the distortion one that they have, and then keep the, the Seymour that's in here. But they're both, you know, gold cover and everything. But... The other one, my beautiful white one, that sounds amazing and better than anybody else's I've ever heard on the friggin' internet, even though I can't play, if I could, then you'd really, you know, wow. <laughs> but, the, the neck, and I, I'm not, I'm too scared to mess with stuff like that, so I'm not gonna. <laughs>
start asking questions. This is a wash burn. Dime. Uh, 333. Which is like, you know, his was the guitar from hell, which would be 666. This is 333. So, this was like a really, really good uh, apparently, we'll see, look, not a bolt-on. It's not cheap. There's, you know, you got the full, the neck is really nice. It's fast. Uh, it came with two Washburn pickups. Because that's the thing. So, the higher-end one uh, came with, you know, his dime time stuff in it. The lower end one, not the lower end, but the mid-level one, which I guess this is, and they used to go for a lot of money now. Uh, I picked this one up for like 300 bucks. And then I dumped a dime time in here and then dumped a 59 or something in here. But I took out both pickups, and I put it, uh, oh, this is a Seymour. Yeah. So I got a Seymour in here, no name, and the Seymour actually here, dime time. See it, Seymour, see? Then, of course, I got the Kiss sticker, because it's the bolt, and there's a little skull. And that plugs in the back. That's just my little thing I did. And put that on. Other than that, you know, this is just as good or better. This is actually better than any bolt. Like, the Deans, no way. I don't care what anybody says. They suck. They suck, 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 suck. Deans have always sucked. That's the problem. I, I bought one the, for, so I'd have the whole collection, so I got his other, you know, one that he had, the sun, uh, tobacco sunburst, the Dean, it's, it's horrible, the 79 or 70, 78 or 79 reissue, crap, it was crap, I put a dime time in it, and it's still crap, the neck is just, this thing is rock solid. I have not tuned this guitar in years. That's why it sounds so bad. <laughs> no, it's my playing. But that should tell you something. And this is not a, a Floyd. Um, this is the Washburn uh, licensed Floyd. But it kicks butt and it does what it's supposed to do. <laughs>
Okay, so I love this guitar. It plays great. I just don't know what to play because you guys are like, Don't play! Tell us things! Um, we don't actually, I don't know if your voice sounds like that. That would be quite strange, wouldn't it? What story am I going to tell, though? So there's one kid, he's 17, and he says he wishes he would have been alive, you know, when Motley Crue was playing in, you know, the early days and how oh, cool it would have been. Yeah, it was cool. When I was 17, Motley Crue was cool. To now, they're not cool. They're old and very smart for quitting because it would be a disaster. It's like Van Halen. Like, everybody wanted Van Halen. They were going to come back and tour this year. That was the plan. Because I'm a little closer to some people in that, has, that know Van Halen. And, uh, yeah, that's what they were gearing up for. Michael Anthony was in, Eddie, Alex, Dave, and they were going to do it. Like, this is what you want. We're going to give it to you. Then they're done. Because Eddie is making millions of dollars off the guitars. He's got a whole line of guitars. He's put out almost everything he's ever touched. And his amps... And he's got a million effects, a million of everything. Cables, straps, you name it. EVH puts it out. So he doesn't need to record. That is a loss now in the music industry. You record at your expense, and then you go out and tour and try to recoup some money, and then make money, because... Everything gets ripped off on the internet. Boom! Gone. You put it out. Boop! Like the Van Halen album. Oh, it didn't go gold immediately. That's because everybody ripped it off. They rip everything off. Few things go, you know, gold or whatever, platinum, immediately. It's usually some fluke, bullcrap setup thing. And they count everything... And, uh, you, you know, you got it. You've got to count. CDs are out. Apparently cassettes are in, which is good because I just found all my old cassettes. And, uh, you know, digital download. Everybody's digital download. That's crap because when your device goes, there it goes. You got to do it all over again. It's stupid. CDs are better. But I still have all my albums. All my vinyl is perfect condition, I think. <laughs> it's been sitting in the exact same place for like 30-something years. I haven't touched it. I just pulled out a box that had some of my really rare uh, 45s. And I showed like an Aussie one on my Facebook. No one said anything. They didn't give a shit. It's the you looking at me, looking at you, and I think, I don't know. Blizzard of Oz. It's the first one. I mean, it's like the first 45. It doesn't even have an A or B side. It's just out there. Ozzy Osbourne, Blizzard of Oz, 
on it uh, you look at me looking at you and I think it's great I, I don't know and then I have another one when it was they were releasing diary of a madman and they have I don't know and crazy train live but it's the diary of a madman cover well a version of that cover the album cover so I've got all that stuff when it came out I got it immediately I mean I had the Blizzard of Oz album when it came out in England boom you could get it import here but people had had it because Randy had brought over tapes so everybody in Burbank had Blizzard of Oz and then we had uh, the second album as soon as it was ready and uh, that was almost a year after the first one Sharon says they recorded the first one, and then three months later, they went back in and did the second. Wrong. They went in, they did the first one. This is all being footed by Don Arden, her father. They tour England for a good amount of time, almost a year, then go back in and do Diary of a Madman. That's why it's so tight. That's why it's so good, because they've been playing for, like, over a year together and they'd had all this you know but over here it was like blizzard of oz came out and then a few months later diary of madman is out and then the tour was gone no that's not how it, that's not how it was and apparently everybody knows who Le I, I mean i thought it was a secret but it's not that uh this guy i know uh Got the masters that were supposed to go to supposed to go to Don Arden and uh, this friend of mine, this girl, she worked for Jet Records. Don said, "Get the masters. This is the masters for the first album and the second album, and three live uh, shows done, mastered, ready to go." He goes, "Bring those and these checks." that he wanted to, uh, you know, have in his possession. And some of them were made out to Randy. So my friend, the guy that keeps saying, you know, Randy gave me his checks, and you went and made copies of them before your girlfriend at the time was going to fly over to London and give all this stuff to uh, Don. But before she did that, she had all the masters just thinking, just think, in sitting in her apartment, Blizzard, Diary, and three live shows. Just sitting there on the couch, and she f the, had to fly out to Chicago for the Chicago show, because that was a big one, on Diary Tour. Then she flew back, and then she was going to fly to London. I think that's the story. Is she's got, she told me the whole thing. It's, it's all typed out. And I put most of it on Bob Daisley's site. But I took out the guy's name, but apparently everybody knows who it is. So, uh, that guy, because of him giving the masters of those albums to Sharon, because she, once she found out, once he told her office, this is where they are, she got cops, and they went with her, and, you know, forced her to give, well, she was so scared, she said, just take it. And then she just took the checks and paperwork to Don, and he's like, where are the masters? She goes, Sharon came with police and a warrant. And he's like, oh, brother, she's got it, and it's hers. And he's like, you know what? It's your problem. Because he just dumped all that money <laughs> to put on, to make those albums and to get the tours going, the Blizzard and the Diary Tour. The Diary Tour is a big production, and he footed the bill for that. And he's like, well, you know what? Now it's your ass. But what she did was kept everybody's royalties. She was, And Randy became a hired gun, and he was only getting paid about 700-something a, a week, which in 82, I guess, is a lot, but sure doesn't seem like it for the guy that, you know, resurrected this guy's career because just as many people were going to see him as 
for Ozzy. I don't know why I always get... Well, because people are always asking me stuff. As soon as I get online, I get hit with a bunch of Randy stuff. I like other bands. A lot of other bands. But, you know, this is what happens. Like Pantera. I love Pantera. Nobody ever asked me about Pantera. I got a few stories. Or whatever. White Zombie, which I used to like, but Rob's kind of an idiot. John Five's the cool guy. Um, I don't know. You know, what, are you, what am I going to say? So, basically, the whole thing was screwed up because this idiot... Apparently, everybody knows who he is, so I don't have to say his name. But uh, he's, the, he's the reason that we're not getting these live things. We've got two of them. One of them they use as a tribute. The other one they put out in that box set. There's still one more. Why not just put it out? Put it out for his 60, well, 60th birthday already came and gone. Nothing. And now, so for Halloween, they're putting out the Blizzard of Oz shirt. But it doesn't show Randy. He was the Blizzard of Oz. Him and Bob Daisley, you know. All of those guys. Bob, Lee, Randy. Ozzy was there for the name. And, you know, people go, yeah, but he was a good singer. And, yeah. On Sabotage, Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath, Masters of Reality. All of those. He was, he was great. And he pulled it off on those.